The Role of IL-12 and IL-23 in Crohn's Disease Crohn's disease is a chronic, relapsing inflammatory condition in which damage can occur anywhere along the gastrointestinal tract. In Crohn's disease, natural immune responses can become disrupted, leading to inflammatory imbalance and a cycle of immune dysregulation. The cytokines interleukin-12, IL-12, and interleukin-23, IL-23, among others, represent an inflammation gateway and help to drive naive T-cell activation and differentiation into Th1 and Th17 cells, as well as drive the activation of natural killer cells. Upon activation, these cells produce pro-inflammatory cytokines, such as TNF, interferon gamma, IL-17, and IL-21, among others. IL-12 and IL-23 are thought to be overexpressed in patients with Crohn's disease, leading to enhanced T-cell and natural killer cell activation and differentiation, resulting in the overproduction of pro-inflammatory cytokines. This increased expression of pro-inflammatory cytokines may lead to the imbalanced immune environment, with far more pro-inflammatory mediators than seen in patients without inflammatory bowel disease. This imbalance is responsible for the chronic intestinal inflammation that is a hallmark of Crohn's disease. Stellara Eustachinumab helps manage Crohn's disease symptoms by targeting IL-12 and IL-23. Stellara is indicated for the treatment of adult patients with moderately to severely active Crohn's disease who have failed or were intolerant to treatment with immunomodulators or corticosteroids, but never failed treatment with a TNF blocker, or failed or were intolerant to treatment with one or more TNF blockers. Stellara is a biologic with a unique mechanism that works by targeting an inflammation gateway. Stellara selectively targets IL-12 and IL-23 which may disrupt inflammation and immune cascades, such as natural killer cell activation and T cell activation and differentiation. Stellara has been shown to disrupt IL-12 and IL-23 mediated signaling and cytokine cascades. By inhibiting these two regulatory cytokines, IL-12 and IL-23, Stellara may help to address the inflammation associated with Crohn's disease. Important safety information. Infections. Stellara, used to Kinumab, may increase the risk of infections and reactivation of latent infections, serious bacterial, fungal, and viral infections, some requiring hospitalization, were reported. In patients with psoriasis, serious infections included diverticulitis, cellulitis, pneumonia, appendicitis, cholecystitis, sepsis, osteomyelitis, viral infections, gastroenteritis, and urinary tract infections. In patients with psoriatic arthritis, serious infections included cholecystitis. In patients with Crohn's disease, serious or other clinically significant infections included anal abscess, gastroenteritis, ophthalmic herpes, pneumonia, and listeria meningitis. Treatment with Stellara should not be initiated in patients with a clinically important active infection until the infection resolves or is adequately treated. Consider the risks and benefits of treatment prior to initiating use of Stellara in patients with a chronic infection or a history of recurrent infection. Instruct patients to seek medical advice if signs or symptoms suggestive of an infection occur while on treatment with Stellara, and consider discontinuing Stellara for serious or clinically significant infections until the infection resolves or is adequately treated. Theoretical risk for vulnerability to particular infections. Individuals genetically deficient in IL-12, IL-23 are particularly vulnerable to disseminated infections from mycobacteria, salmonella, and bacillus calmet guerin BCG vaccinations. Serious infections and fatal outcomes have been reported in such patients. It is not known whether patients with pharmacologic blockade of IL-12, IL-23 from treatment with Stellara may be susceptible to these types of infections. Appropriate diagnostic testing should be considered, for example, tissue culture, stool culture, as dictated by clinical circumstances. Pretreatment evaluation of tuberculosis. 
TB. Evaluate patients for TB prior to initiating treatment with Stellara. Do not administer Stellara to patients with active tuberculosis infection. Initiate treatment of latent TB before administering Stellara. Closely monitor patients receiving Stellara for signs and symptoms of active TB during and after treatment. Malignancies. Stellara is an immunosuppressant and may increase the risk of malignancy. Malignancies were reported among patients who received Stellara in clinical studies. The safety of Stellara has not been evaluated in patients who have a history of malignancy or who have a known malignancy. There have been reports of the rapid appearance of multiple cutaneous squamous cell carcinomas in patients receiving Stellara who had risk factors for developing non-melanoma skin cancer, NMSC. All patients receiving Stellara, especially those over 60 years or those with a history of PUVA or prolonged immunosuppressant treatment, should be monitored for the appearance of NMSC. Hypersensitivity Reactions Stellara is contraindicated in patients with clinically significant hypersensitivity to ustekinumab or excipients. Hypersensitivity reactions, including anaphylaxis and angioedema, have been reported with Stellara. If an anaphylactic or other clinically significant hypersensitivity reaction occurs, institute appropriate therapy and discontinue Stellara. Reversible Posterior Leukoencephalopathy Syndrome, RPLS. One case of Reversible Posterior Leukoencephalopathy Syndrome, RPLS, was observed in clinical studies of psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. No cases of RPLS were observed in clinical studies of Crohn's disease. If RPLS is suspected, administer appropriate treatment and discontinue Stellara. RPLS is a neurological disorder, which is not caused by an infection or demyelination. RPLS can present with headache, seizures, confusion, and visual disturbances. RPLS has been associated with fatal outcomes. Immunizations. Prior to initiating therapy with Stellara, patients should receive all age-appropriate immunizations recommended by current guidelines. Patients being treated with Stellara should not receive live vaccines. BCG vaccines should not be given during treatment or within one year of initiating or discontinuing Stellara. Exercise caution when administering live vaccines to household contacts of Stellara patients, as shedding and subsequent transmission to Stellara patients may occur. Non-live vaccinations received during a course of Stellara may not elicit an immune response sufficient to prevent disease. Concomitant therapies. The safety of Stellara in combination with other immunosuppressive agents or phototherapy was not evaluated in clinical studies of psoriasis. Ultraviolet-induced skin cancers developed earlier and more frequently in mice. In psoriasis studies, the relevance of findings in mouse models for malignancy risk in humans is unknown. In psoriatic arthritis studies, Concomitant MTX use did not appear to influence the safety or efficacy of Stellara. In Crohn's disease studies, concomitant use of 6-mercaptopurine, azathioprine, methotrexate, and corticosteroids did not appear to influence the overall safety or efficacy of Stellara. Allergen Immunotherapy Stellara may decrease the protective effect of allergen immunotherapy, decreased tolerance, which may increase the risk of an allergic reaction to a dose of allergen immunotherapy. Therefore, caution should be exercised in patients receiving or who have received allergen immunotherapy, particularly for anaphylaxis. Most common adverse reactions. The most common adverse reactions, greater than or equal to 3% and higher than that with placebo, in psoriasis clinical trials for Stellara, 45 mg, Stellara, 90 mg, or placebo were nasopharyngitis, 8%, 7%, 8%, upper respiratory tract infection, 5%, 4%, 5%, headache, 5%, 5%, 3%, and fatigue, 3%, 3%, 2%, respectively. In psoriatic arthritis, PSA, studies, a higher incidence of arthralgia and nausea was observed in patients treated with Stellara when compared with placebo, 3% versus 1% for both. In Crohn's disease induction studies, common adverse reactions, 3% or more of patients treated with Stellara and higher than placebo, reported through week 8 for Stellara 6 mg per kilogram intravenous single infusion or placebo included vomiting, 4% versus 3%. In the Crohn's disease maintenance study, common adverse reactions, 3% or more of patients treated with Stellara and higher than placebo, reported through week 44 were nasopharyngitis, 11% versus 8%, Injection site erythema, 5% versus 0%. Vulvovaginal candidiasis mycotic infection, 5% versus 1%. Bronchitis, 5% versus 3%. Pruritus, 4% versus 2%. Urinary tract infection, 4% versus 2%. And sinusitis, 3% versus 2%.
Please see full prescribing information and medication guide for Stellara. Provide the medication guide to your patients and encourage discussion.